اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان العین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین الحمد للہ الذی جعلنا من المتمسکین بولایت امیر المؤمنین ولائمت المعصومین علیہم السلام والحمد للہ الذی ہدانا لہذا وما کننا لنہتدی لولان ہدان اللہ ثم الصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین خاتم النبیین شفیع المذنبین حبیب الہ العالمین عبی القاسم المصطفی محمد وعلى آل بیته الطیبین الطاہرین المعصومین ولعنت اللہ على اعدائهم اجمعین من يوم عداوتهم إلى يوم الدين عما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمنا بالله صدق اللہ العلی العظیم صلی علی محمد و آلی محمد اما بعد السلام علیکم جمعی و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ I begin in the name of Allah تبارک و تعالی There is no doubt that it's due to his kindness and generosity that he gives us opportunities such as these where we gather in reflection and in remembrance of Him, Tabarak wa Ta'ala. As we have been doing for the past five or six months, we like to at least once a month uh, pick a particular surah of the Holy Qur'an and analyze it, explain it, do tafsir of it, especially so that we can better understand it when we recite it. And we have tried to pick over the course of these months surah which we recite in, the, in our salah um, on a daily basis. And the surah that we picked for today is Surah Al-Asr. Surah Al-Asr is the 103rd surah of the Holy Qur'an and according to most mufassirun and ulama, it is a Makki surah. That means it was revealed to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his family while he was still in Makkah. That which points to that being a Makki surah um, is, for example, the shortness or the short verses of this particular surah. One of the characteristics of Makki verses as opposed to Madani verses is that Madani verses tend to be longer in length. Um, which is why when we look at Surah Al-Baqarah, when we look at Surah Ali Imran, we find that the verses are quite long compared to the 30th chapter of the Holy Qur'an when a lot of the verses are short. Um, and so this is one of the hints which points to the fact that it is a Makki Surah. Furthermore, Makki Surahs generally tend to awaken the person who is reading that particular surah. Makki surahs talk about the day of judgment a lot because it was revealed to Makkah in Makkah to the people who are idol worshippers at that time and the only way that they could come into the fold of Tawheed entirely was to believe in the day of judgment and to have that as a part of um, uh, an utter belief or a yaqeen that they had which would awaken them. The day of judgment is supposed to have that effect on human beings. Thinking about a day in which accounting will take place, thinking about a day which our deeds will be looked at by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should have the desired effect of awakening a human being. And we find that the Surah Al-Asr has that message. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says all of mankind indeed are at loss. Yeah? So right away it paints a very, paints a very bleak picture. Yeah? A picture in which one has to... Um, reflect upon or one has to um, ponder upon their particular um, lifestyle, whether or not that lifestyle is leading me to be at loss or it's not leading me to be at loss. And we'll come to this discussion of inna linsana lafi khosu. You know, it's a very arm statement. It's a very general statement and all-encompassing statement. So we find that because of these two characteristics, it is known to be a Makki Surah. Now there is no doubt that Surah Al-Asr is one of the shortest Surahs of the Holy Qur'an. Three verses, the length of the words or the altogether are very short compared to the other Surahs. However, what's very interesting about Surah Al-Asr is that Mufassirun and Ulama have 
spent a lot of time and attention focusing on Surah Al-Asr. Yeah? And the reason they focus so much attention on Surah Al-Asr um, is because they say that the entire summary of the Qur'an, the entire ethos of the Qur'an, the entire objective and the mission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is found in the Qur'an is summarized in Surah Al-Asr. Yeah? So Surah Al-Asr is this cliff notes you can say. Yeah? Of this grander, great book And it is summarized And the objectives of the entire message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Is summarized in this very beautiful and short surah And this is why, you know, Mufassirun have written much about this I have an entire book at home It's about maybe 250 to 280 pages Dedicated to Surah Al-Asr yeah? Now imagine, yeah, I don't think any many of the surahs Unless their length of course would require that much effort to write But a, a surah which has three verses alone um, Yet that much has been written about it Shows the importance or the, the insight that is found in that particular surah As far as the fadl or the merits of this surah are concerned We get traditions for example from our sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad Where he says Man qara'a wal asr fi nawafilihi He says that one who recites al-asr in their nawafil yeah, In their nawafil salah So in our, whether it is nawafil of fajr, nawafil of maghrib Whichever nafila we recite If one recites surah al-asr in their nawafil Ba'athallahu yawm al-qiyamati mushriqan wajhah Dahikan sannah qariratu ayna hatta yadkhul al-jannah He says that one who recites this surah in their nawafil Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise them on the day of judgment with their faces shining, their teeth or their, their faces smiling and their eyes glittering until they enter Jannah. And this is the fadl or the grace of that surah. Now obviously we've talked about this with every surah. This is not like one who just recites that surah is expecting that particular result, right? The surah must have had an impact on one's life. Uh, one must be living um, the verses of this particular surah and adopt the qualities of that surah. Other verses, other hadith are also talked about the greatness of this surah. For example, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. He says, Man qara'a hadihi surah kataba Allahu ashara hasanat. وَخَتَمَ لَهُ بِخَيْرِ He says, one who recites this surah, God will give them ten hasanat, ten good deeds, just for reciting it once. And he will make his end be good. وَخَتَمَ لَهُ بِخَيْرِ um, This is a very important point. Yeah? You know, one of the biggest things what we talk about in the, the study of akhlaq and in the ilmul akhlaq is to be cautious or is to be always worried about how we end our lives. You know, sometimes we focus on the, the, the path right now, right? But the concern should be how the khatam is, how the end is going to be. Whether we're going to be in iman in the end or we're not going to be in iman in the end. And naturally, if we look at this particular surah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says every human being is at loss except for one who does these four things. Therefore, one who lives this surah will have these four qualities present in their life and inshallah their, their, their end, their khatam, yeah, will be taken care of. So here the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his family, he says that one who recites this surah will have a good ending وَكَانَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ الْحَقِّ and will be part of the ashab or the companions of the truth and this is very interesting وَإِنْ قَرَأْتَ عَلَى وَإِنْ قَرَأْتْ عَلَى مَا يَدْفُنْ تَحْتَ الْأَرْضِ أَوْ يَخْزُنْ حَفَظَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَىٰ أَنْ يُخْرِجَهُ سَاحِبُهُ and if it is recited over that which you bury or you hide. You know, sometimes if you have something valuable, you bury it, right? Now, we may not necessarily do that in today's day and age. We may have different methods of protecting that which we value. But here the hadith says that one who recites this surah over that which they value and they protect, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect it until the rightful owner gets back to it. Yeah? So maybe these are practices that we should have You know, we can apply this really 
on many different circumstances. When my child goes to school, recite Surah Al-Asr over my child. Yeah? Something I love, something I protect, something that's valuable to me, God says, I will look after it until it returns back to you. Yeah? We have something that we, we're going on vacation, recite it over our house. Yeah? Um, anything. These are just some practical examples that we're giving that we can apply to this particular surah. But we can do this for anything with this belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken responsibility of guarding and protecting that particular thing. We come to the first verse of this surah. Now obviously we're not going to finish this surah today. Yeah? Um, the, the completion of the surah will happen next Thursday when inshallah we will be celebrating the wiladat of our 8th Imam, Imam al-Rida alayhi salam. So the first verse of the surah is wal-asr. Yeah? Wal-asr. This wow is known as what? Wa al asr. What is this wow known as? Hmm? Swearing. Wow al qasam. Yeah. It is known as wow al qasam, and wow al qasam is an oath um, a word. It is a word used to describe an oath. This is why people say sometimes wallahi. Yeah. When they want to swear upon something. Yeah. Don't use that oath ever. Yeah. But you know this is part of um, certain cultures where they will say, Wallahi, I didn't do it. Right. We're told to avoid that particular oath at all times. Um, but this wow is known as wow al qasam and it has been used in the Quran numerous times. Yeah. What are some examples of when it has been used? One najm. Wal duha. Wal layl. Wal fajr. Ahsantum. Yeah. Was shams, yeah? Surah to shams has seven qasams in this particular surah, isn't it? Was shamsi, wal qamari, wal nahari, wal layli, was samai, wal ardi, and wa nafsi, yeah? Wa nafsi wa ma sawa. These are all qasams that have been used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, as far as the importance of qasam, um, we will discuss the importance of the qasam, whether it lies in the object of which is being sworn at or the subject which is being sworn for. Yeah? And we'll discuss this point, inshallah, down the line as far as the importance of that which is being sworn upon. So, wow is wow al qasam. Whenever we find this wow al qasam, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking something very serious. When God swears by something, yeah? When God takes an oath of something, that in itself denotes that whatever is coming after that is very important and pay attention. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take an oath by? Al-Asr. Yeah? What is Al-Asr? Al-Asr or Asr. Ain Sad Ra. Asr. Asr in the Arabic language actually means Dagt. Yeah? Dagt means that which has been put pressure upon it. Yeah? That which is squeezed or that which is compressed is known as asr in the Arabic language. Which is why, what is very interesting, juice is known as what in the Arabic language? Asir. Yeah? Look at the beauty of this language. Yeah? Asir comes from the word asr. Asir mean, it is, it is, means juice. You say asir or burtukal. Yeah? Asir or inab. Yeah, so this is how we describe different types of juices. But they are called asir. Why? Because the fruit is squeezed or compressed until the liquid comes out of it. Yeah? So asr in its original Arabic means something which is squeezed or compressed or is pressed. After that original usage in the Arabic language, it then became further used to describe a particular time of the day. And that is the time of asr. Right? The, the last part or the closest part to sunset. And it is known as Asr in particular because time is compressed and squeezed at that moment. Yeah? The time of work is about to come to an end. The time of earning more risk is about to come to an end. It's the days of full effort and one has worked hard and now they are coming to that finish. So time is being squeezed to try to finish as much as we can at that moment. And that is why that time is known as Asr. So originally in the Arabic language it started to mean that which is squeezed. Because time is squeezed at that moment, time is hard at that moment, that time of Asr then began to known as Asr. After that, it then became a wider usage of the word Asr to mean time as a whole or period as a whole. Yeah? So time in, in all yeah, began to be known 
as Asr. And then therefore, after that, specific periods were given this name. So for example, we would find Asr Sadrul Islam. Yeah? The time when Islam first came by, or the period when time when the Islam first came by. Or Asru Khilafatul Imam Ali. The period of the Khilafah of Imam Ali. They are also known as Asr. So I want us to notice this progression. Right? From meaning that which is squeezed to putting that on time and then referring as a period as a whole is also referred to Asr. And it is because of these different usages in the Arabic language. Right? In the original Arabic language, the word Asr has been used in so many different ways that Mufassirun give different opinions to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means when He says, Wal Asr. Yeah? We understand? Yeah? It is not that Mufassirun were clueless of what it meant, but because you have to come back to the linguistic root. And when we come back to the linguistic root, you find that the Mufassirun, because of the different usages of Asr, they say that it is very difficult to pinpoint one exact meaning to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant when He said, Wala Asr. When you look at the books of Tafsir, there are numerous meanings that have been given about Al Asr. Yeah? I will inshallah will just go through five of what they say are the most commonly accepted meanings of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means when he says wal asr. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. The first opinion about what al asr means is, is the actual time of asr yani the end of the day yeah? so when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wal asr he's actually taking an oath by a particular time of day that is the evening part of the day right before sunset and the 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 reason why mufassirun give that particular time they say look there is an example we already have in the holy quran in the holy quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already sworn by the morning when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wad duha, yeah, by the brightness of the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, or was subhi idha asfara innaha li ahdal kubar, ki, uh, kubar. So he says that in this particular verse, by the dawn when it brightens, indeed it is one of the greatest signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they say, look, the fact that he has already sworn by the first part of the day, it makes sense then that Al Asr is then swearing by the last part of the day, right? And especially when we look at what happens in that last part of the day, there are tremendous changes which are manifesting in that particular time. We talked about the humanistic changes which are changing, isn't it? Where a human being, for example, is ending their work day, um, a human being is about to come back and meet his family. And so all of these humanistic changes which are taking place are manifesting at that particular time of the day. Now obviously in today's day and age, circumstances are different. Yeah? Um, we have spoiled the system in a way. Yeah? Um, if you think about it, this was revealed at a time when there was no electricity. Yeah? There was no night working, night labor. So literally when the sun was about to end or was about to set, that was the last time you could earn a livelihood at that particular day. What you made is what you had for your family and you were going back to them with that. Now obviously things have changed um, and one can argue for the better and one can also argue that it has changed for the worse with, with inventions that have come about. Um, when by 6 p.m. everything would end, you would be in bed by 8.30. It would be much easier to wake up for Salatul Layl at 3 in the morning. Yeah? The fact that we end our day at 1 in the morning uh, makes it nearly impossible to wake up for Salatul Layl, let alone Salatul Fajr. Yeah? Um, so we can say that yes, these, these technological diff uh, changes have added value to our lives, uh, maybe materialistically. But from a spiritual way, um, it has taken away from us opportunities to do those extra hasanat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really likes us to do. But this time in particular, because of what is happening from a humanistic perspective, and then when we look at from a creative or a creation perspective, 
We notice some, some very beautiful things um, during the evening. If you notice birds are flying home at that time. Yeah? The sun is setting. If there's clouds while the sun is setting, the beautiful red glow um, that comes. These are big changes. You know, I think we've taken them for granted now the sun setting. Big deal, right? Um, but these are tremendous um, um, transformations which are taking place from daytime to nighttime. When we reflect upon these um, on a grander scale, we realize the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who allows these type of things to manifest um, and take place. I always used to think, you know, living, uh, living in an apartment complex when I used to live in California, um, the apartments were different there. You know, in California, the weather's better. There's no need for like an enclosed office building type of apartments. You know, you had a lot of outdoor type of apartments. Um, and uh, at that time, for, you know, for Muslims, alhamdulillah, we're really lucky that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mandated or obligated for us to recite Salatul Maghrib at, at sunset time, you know. Because at least we focus on this greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time. But we would find, you know, like or I would think that while we were reciting Salatul Maghrib, people would be outside at that moment still swimming and listening to music. And it's just, a, just a nothing, nothing big for them had happened. And made me at that time even realize how lucky we are to have this religion, you know. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us opportunities time and time again to focus on Him. To think about Him. To think about the greatness um, that is transpiring at that moment. Um, and so when we look at these these changes which are taking place at the time of Asr, it is not an ordinary time. It is a very, it is a time which is manifesting the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? From a creative perspective, from, uh, and that creative perspective is both in the human perspective and in the general creation perspective. So the, it manifests the Tawheed al of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore it's a very important time and that's for, this is why Mufassirun say that it applies here when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Wal Asr. It is referring to the time of Asr or the evening time. The second opinion that is given is that it represents all of time. Yeah. So it, it takes that second opinion Where it's not just referring to a particular time of day But all of Asr um, It is referring to that particular um, uh, What is it called? Like, What's that chain? You know like uh, when we study There's a line And it marks the beginning of the line What is it called? Huh? Huh? Origin? No Margin No but not really margin There's a word for it like uh, history, his history line, timeline. Thank you. Yeah, I, I enjoy how we help each other. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala. So this timeline. So the, the Mufassirun say that that al Asr in fact represents the entire timeline. Yeah, because at every time, in every generation, in every era, um, there is a lesson that we can take to improve our lives. Okay. So Al-Asr here refers to that entire time period altogether. The third opinion is, is that it represents a specific period in time. Yeah. So not the time of the day, nor all of time, but rather a specific period of time which has been the most important as far as our lives are concerned. And some are of that opinion that it represents the period of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam. Allahumma ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And others have said that it is actually referring to the time of our living Imam, the period in which he will come. Ajal Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. There's actually a hadith that comes from our sixth Imam alayhi salam who says that he was asked about Surah Al Asr. An qawlillahi Azza wa Jal wal Asr in al insana. لَفِي خُسْرِ فَقَالَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ وَالْعَصْرِ يَعْنِي عَصْرُ خُرُوجِ الْقَائِمِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ وَإِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرٍ يَعْنِي أَعْدَائِنَا yeah? yani Those people who are at loss are those who are against the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. So this particular hadith offers that karina or offers that link to say that that asr is actually referring to that specific time of the coming of our Imam. The fourth opinion is that it goes back to the original linguistic meaning. What's the original linguistic meaning? 
Ahsantum, yeah? The squeezing and the compression that is happening. And the reason they say that is because time as a whole, life as a whole, um, is one in which a human being is constantly squeezed and tested. Yeah? Um, we are constantly put into places where do I compromise my religion or do I not compromise my religion? Do I do this for the sake of, of, of common good, even if it is against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants? And life is full of tests like this, full of tests like this. And these type of tests build character at the end of the day. So they say that this goes back to that original linguistic meaning. Very interesting, right? That all of these meanings are possible when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wal asr. The fifth meaning is that it actually refers to salatul asr. Yeah? Um, so the first meaning was time of asr. The second was all of time. The third is a specific time. The fourth is the pressure that is put on man to be successful in this life. And the fifth is it refers to Salatul Asr as well. And the reason why they say that it refers to Salatul Asr as well is because of the importance that is placed in Salatul Asr in the Holy Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hafizu ala salawat wa salatil wusta. Yeah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, be watchful over your prayers, especially the middle prayers. Yeah? The middle prayers refer to Zuhr and Asr, the afternoon prayers. And it's very interesting how God has told us 1400 years ago to be watchful over that prayer. And when we look at our lives, you know, um, that is the main prayer which most human beings will delay. Yeah? For work reasons. Yeah, for whatever reasons, I'm out with my family, gone to Wonderland, I'll pray later. Yeah? Whatever it is, it's the, it's the one salah that generally human beings will move around their schedule because we say, well, we have eight hours. Right? And God is merciful. And yeah, He is merciful, alhamdulillah. Right? Um, but how importantly God has told us at that time that watch over those afternoon prayers. And of course, it... The, the tendency of human beings has been the same from the very beginning. Um, and the reason why it is said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told mankind to be watchful over these prayers is because at the time of the revelation of Islam, because of the heat of, of Saudi Arabia or, or Hijaz, people would be willing to forego their afternoon prayers. I said, ah, it's okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell them, be watchful over your afternoon prayers. Don't play around with those afternoon prayers. Now obviously, I, I think it is a form of mercy from God that we've been given these eight hours, yeah, or six hours in the winter, right? Um, if it is possible to pray on time, we should always take that precaution and pray on time. But we are working. God understands. Yeah? We sometimes, once in a, in a year, maybe doing something at that time, I believe God understands, which is why out of His mercy, He has given us the six to eight hours. But there should never be an occasion when that salah should go to qadha. And it should never be like that. Yeah? There should be no reason why any one of us in this room um, cannot find an opportunity to pray Salatul Zuhr and Asr, even if we are working that entire time. Yeah, um, I don't. I cannot imagine any manager or any employer today refusing an employee an opportunity to pray. Now, obviously, we have to pray during our break. Yeah, we can't expect the employee to give us an additional fifteen minutes so that we can pray our salah, and then we take our fifteen minutes and go smoke a cigarette. No, it doesn't work that way. We sacrifice our own personal break for the for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And I do, if we were to take that clause or take that request, I don't see any employer ever refusing because of the repercussions in the society we live today. But furthermore, um, we can pray that at our lunch, we can pray whatever it is, it's a very, it, it takes eight minutes, yeah? four and four. Yeah? Um, obviously at those times we don't have to do all the extra mustahabbat. God is satisfied to know that my abd has taken his own time and prayed during his day for me, the rest will be taken care of by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the most probable reasons or most probable um, meanings of what Al-Asr means. Now, Ayatullah Nasir Makarim Shirazi in Al-Amthal or Tafsir al namuna says that it is not far-fetched to believe that all of these meanings are true because these meanings don't contradict one another. 
right? If they contradicted one another, then you would say that, okay, that, that some of these meanings can't be true. But because none of these meanings contradict other, each other, it is not far-fetched to believe that they are all true. However, he says that the most probable meaning according to him is the oath or qasam that refers to all of time. The entire time. Because he says something very, very important. Now, I want us to pay attention to this particular phrase. He says the importance of Quranic oaths. Yeah? Wal asr, was shams. The importance of Quranic oaths is not on the object of that which is being sworn, but on the subject of that object. Yeah? Let me read that again. Yeah? He says the importance of Quranic oaths are not on the object of that which is being sworn. So the asr is not the importance. The shams is not the important. The important is the subject of that particular object. In this verse or in this surah, what is the subject? Man is at loss. That's what's important. And therefore when you take that man is at loss, it is most apt that it refers to all of time. Because man is at loss at all times, not just one particular time. If it referred to one particular time, that means other people not living in that time would not be at loss. Hmm? With me? Yeah? So here he says that that is the most probable <laughs> meaning. Lastly, yeah? Um, it took much longer than I expected. Innal insana lafi khusr. This is a very powerful line by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, surely he says, all of man is at loss. Yeah? All of man. Yeah? Um, whoever you are, whatever you do, doesn't matter. No matter what time you live in, you are going to be at loss. Because nothing can take on father time and win. Yeah? We look at athletes, try to play forever, never lasts. Yeah? We look at movie stars want to do something forever, never lasts. Here the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you play in my field, when you play in my house, all of you will be at loss. Now this loss can be spiritual, this loss can be physical, but it's a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will suffer a loss. Except, except if we follow a four-step approach by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ yeah? When we look at these four pillars of success, I like to call it pillars of success, yeah? and when we apply that to Karbala, we see why Aba Abdullah salam was so successful. Yeah? Because he manifested these four qualities. And when we look at these, we find that these are present in all of those who lived in Karbala, especially our fourth Imam alayhi salam. Especially this part of sabr. وَتَوَاسَوْ yeah? بِالسَّبْرِ yeah, It is said that the Imam alayhi salam endured so much, hmm? so much in these times that the tears would never stop coming down the cheeks of our fourth Imam. The Imam saw so much in Karbala. He had to bury his own sister in the fields of Sham. He had to see the head of his father being raised in the spear in Karbala. He saw the niqab being lifted from the face of Zainab alayhi salam in that journey as the sabaya. All of this was witnessed by the Imam alayhi salam that they said the Imam never stopped crying. Companions used to come to Imam al sajjad alayhi salam and they would say, Yabna Rasulillah. إلى متى هذا البكاء؟ Until when will you cry, O oh, the grandson of the Prophet? To which Imam Sajjad replied, You are not being fair upon me. You are not being fair upon me. Yaqub saw that his son was missing and knew that he was still alive. Yet he continued to cry till his eyes turned blind. I saw 18 members of my family being slaughtered in Karbala. How can you ask me not to cry for them? Ah. The tears continued in the, in the eyes of the Imam alayhi salam. It is said every time the Imam would go out in the marketplace and he would see a butcher about to slaughter an animal, he would say to the butcher, stop, did you provide him any water before you slaughtered? This is from the sunnah of Rasulullah. The butcher would reply, oh the son of the Prophet, I am a Muslim, of course I gave water to this animal. The Imam says, ya bata, ya bata. <laughs> Oh, my father, who was killed in Karbala without being given water. <coughs> 
وسيعلم الذين ظلموا اي منقلب ينقلبون انا لله وانا اليه راجعون we pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive the sins of our parents and loved ones we pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the return of our living imam for those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers ya allah please accept their hajat rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta as-sami'ul alim walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin rahimallahu man kara suratul mubarakatul fatiha tasbihuha as-salati ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad